Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them. Today I am at Canaraville Falls in Canaraville, and uh, I brought the girls, didn't bring the husband, so come along with me today. That's right, my friends. So I was left alone to watch our little one and a half year old. And for this small adventure Saturday, we are following my wonderful wife, Laurel, as she went out uh, a couple weeks ago on a girl's trip to uh, this place called Canaraville Falls. It's this beautiful waterfall with a ladder right next to it. And you're kind of like hiking in the water the whole time, kind of like Zion's, but it's a little bit smaller. And uh, so she while she had a fun time, she made a stop for me to collect some microbes right at that base of the waterfall. And uh, so this is her gathering it. Um, she thought that she would need the pocket knife, but really it just kind of fell right off the rock. Um, this is sandstone, uh, so it's pretty easy to get stuff off of. Uh, but yeah, so here is her sample. There is the waterfall. And let's take a look. Let's see what we've got. So this is our uh, day one. We're going to look at this in three different phases. So day one, and then after a week, and then after two weeks. So the first thing that we noticed a lot of is this plant material, which I believe to be algae. And uh, one of the things that you'll notice on this algae is there's a bunch of really small little circles. What are those circles, you may ask? Well, uh, those are stomata. So that is where the gas exchange happens. So carbon dioxide, goes in and uh, oxygen and water goes out of those uh, little circles. So that was for day one. It was mostly just the algae and I didn't see too much living. I usually like to let things kind of sit for a couple days at my place to uh, just let things kind of fester and grow a little bit. And as you can see here, there were a lot of little white-ish things floating around. And these are actually ciliates. So they're small, but they're visible to the naked eye if you could get a really, really good zoom. And uh, so again, this is where we start on the uh, after after about a week. So there was definitely a boom in population and it was almost scary to look at for a second. Um, <laughs> I am normally used to seeing, you know, really good diversity, but in this particular video uh, footage that I was getting, all I could see were the this one type of ciliate and uh, this plant matter. So I thought that this episode was kind of going to be a dud because it didn't really show too much exciting stuff. So I let it sit for about a week. And then all of a sudden, these big white blobs started showing up. Now, as you can see, they are definitely, I mean, they're small, but they're still bigger than those ciliates that we were seeing. And I'd never seen blobs like this before. So I decided to capture one and I put it under the microscope uh, without a cover slip on top of it because I didn't want to it to be like squished or anything and this is what I saw so we have those ciliates again and they are just kind of crawling all over this thing and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what it was until I posted it to a group on reddit and those people um, one of the guys that I follow his name uh, his YouTube channel is diet Tom's diet Tom's he actually responded that it might be a bacterial colony and that's where I got the idea to squish one of these and see what was inside. And it turns out that there were definitely a lot of bacteria, and that is what we're looking at here. So again, there's the ciliates swimming around and the bacteria as well. Now, normally with a compound microscope, you can get a little bit closer, but I wasn't able to because uh, my objectives were super messy, my, my 400 times was, and then my oil immersion ha was covered in this old dirty oil, so I need to get a whole new objective with that. Anyway, so I thought that this whole thing was just going to collapse and that was going to be the whole end of this episode. However, I decided to let it sit for one more week and just see if anything else would be alive, if the bacteria would still be there or if the uh, ciliates would still be there. And this is what I was left with. 
So that massive colony of bacteria was gone, and the huge colony of ciliates was gone. I mean, there were still a few here and there, but most of it was replaced by this strange organism. So I'm normally mostly familiar with protists and uh, things that are more animal-related and plant-related, uh, but I believe this is something else entirely. I think this is probably a fungus, and uh, so that's what I'm going to call it for the rest of this video and in the uh, scenes where we see it. Um, if I'm wrong, uh, I'll pin a comment if somebody else knows what that is. Uh, but what I did notice is that this fungus was, um, or whatever it was, was uh, almost like wrapping itself entirely around and it looked to be either eating or colonizing the algae. So, you know, the algae was very green and vibrant before and I noticed that once this started taking over, there were a lot more spots in the algae that were hollow and that were clear and that were broken off. So what can we learn from this? Well, the first thing that you can learn is that if you are a microbe hunter and you're out collecting stuff and you don't see anything cool within the first day or the first week or the first two weeks, um, I would recommend maybe holding on to your sample for a little bit because you never know what you're going to find. And uh, in this case, we're going to show you in just a bit that there were a lot of other organisms that started to wake up once this fungus started taking over. So for example, there are a couple ciliates right there and and uh, soon we're going to look at some more. This was a cool looking one uh, that seemed to be kind of like pinched around the edge. And uh, let's see, here is another one that has a different shape. So this is most likely a different species. Now I have a couple of books that could probably help me identify what these cilia genus or species are, uh, but I just didn't have the time for it this week. So uh, we're just kind of going to be looking at them and I hope that that is enough for you guys. Um, but this one was a really interesting one. It was kind of misshapen and I don't think I've really ever seen a cilia with that kind of shape before. I don't even know how I would describe that one. But another big thing that started popping up besides those ciliates were these vorticella. Now, we've covered vorticella a lot in these episodes, and especially in this Small Adventure Saturday series. They are very similar to um, uh, rotifers and how they feed, in that they have uh, these beating hairs that uh, undulate or flap in kind of like a rotating motion, which creates like a vortex towards them, and that's how they feed. Uh, you can see this one's kind of caught on one of those uh, fungal uh, strands, I guess, and it's not able to create like a good vortex. Um, here's another cool thing that I found. This is a flagellate. Uh, it's different than a ciliate. So a flagellate has usually one or multiple long tails or um, strands just at the very end, whereas ciliates usually are covered in hairs uh, all around the sides or, you know, all around their entire body, and so they swim differently. I actually got pretty excited to see this flagellate. Um, I've, you know, spent probably four to six hours looking at things under the microscope every week for the last, you know, three months, and I haven't seen flagellates in my samples. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe they're just not found too much around here, or maybe I'm not looking at them in the right uh, way. Moving on from that flagellate, we've got some more small ciliates here. There's one in the middle ground, and then scrolling up, we have another. And then here we are zoomed in, looking at some of those strands of the what I believe to be fungi, and then there are some bacteria there as well. Uh, again, we saw tons of vorticella, so here was another one. Um, I can never get enough footage of these guys. They're just super, super fun to watch. But anyway, so the first lesson that I said, the first thing that we can really learn from this is that you, you never know what you're going to get and to hold on to your samples because, uh, you know, things might pop up a couple days later or a couple weeks later and, you know, things are hibernating, just waiting to grow. Uh, you know, this container has been closed this whole time, so it hasn't been in contact with any other 
uh, water or uh, very other little air. But uh, the last thing I want to share is that this is a great example of the circle of life. You know, uh, some things have big population booms and then something else will eat those and something else will eat what ate the first thing. And uh, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed making it. It was fun to observe this over the last couple weeks. Um, I want to thank my patrons and uh, all of my subscribers and supporters. It's been great to see this channel grow. And um, anyway, so thanks again for watching and I hope to see you guys soon. Now I am off to the event horizon here and uh, I'm going to get sucked into a black hole through my dark field microscope. So goodbye.